Okay, today I'm going to demonstrate a uh, exploit that I just recently learned about with Windows 7. Basically, in a nutshell, what it lets you do is when a user has access to your system as an administrator, they can open up a back door that will allow them to run virtually any command they want from your login screen as the system user. In other words, no one has to be logged in. All they have to know is a certain key sequence and they can wreak absolute havoc with your machine. So, backtrack a little bit. Again, it has to be run from an administrator account in order to open the loophole in the first place. That in and of itself is a significant problem. Um, but for the average user, it's a big vulnerability. A lot of people buy computers from Best Buy and so forth. And when you're going through that setup process, you're setting up an administrator account, which for the end user is great because you can install programs, you can delete programs, you can change system settings, and they all seem innocuous enough. The problem is when you get malware, viruses, things like that, they also have the same level of access that you do. And in a lot of cases, it causes a lot of damage to your system. Typically, I recommend users run as a user. Once you go through that setup program, create yourself another account that's a standard user. and Use that one for your day-to-day -day stuff browsing the web, checking mail, playing video games, and so forth. And if you need to install a program or delete a program or change the settings, Windows 7 is great about prompting you for administrator credentials. And you just give it the other account's username and password, and it'll let you go on about your merry way. Now, that being said, let's use this scenario here. You're living with a roommate. You and the roommate are fighting about the rent. You just bought a new computer. <clears throat> you went through the whole setup process. You've been playing on your computer for a while. You decide to get up and go to the bathroom. You walk away. Roommate sits down. Roommate has some some computer knowledge. Um, to keep within YouTube's guidelines here, I wrote two batch files to do what I want to do, so I'm not showing you the commands, but I'm showing you the effects of the commands. It took me all about an hour to write these two files, and that's with a lot of time for researching the commands to find out how to do them for the command line and how to how make them effective and so forth. So, your roommate's somewhat savvy. He goes about doing this. Now let's time it, okay? Right now, it's 10.32 by my clock. I sit down at your computer, I drop in the thumb drive, I copy two files to your desktop. Hit start, go to all programs, I open up the wrong button. Unfortunately, my mouse is a little bit pokey with this uh, screen recording here, so it's a little strange, but I go to accessories, now I want an administrator command prompt, so run as administrator, UAC is going to yell at me, I tell it that's okay, I now have an administrator command prompt, perhaps, there it is. Now I already know, I've copied those files to your desktop, and I know how to get to your desktop, that's not rocket science, anybody can do it, and there's my files, I run the first file, opens the exploit, turns off Windows Firewall, enables remote desktop, and finally copies my batch file. Now I just type this. Those go poof. I hit exit and walk away and you never know I'm there. That took me a minute and that's counting the screw up. It takes you longer than that to walk to the bathroom let alone to use it. You come back to your computer, you decide you're gonna go shoot some pool. So you are going to log off your system thinking it's nice, safe, and secure. So Windows will go through its happy little log off dance. You see the user prompt and you decide to go and shoot pool. In the meantime, your roommate connects to your router, looks at the DHCP list and gets your IP address. Or if they wanted to spend the extra time, they could have gotten it right from your computer while they were sitting in front of it. In either event, they get your, your information. I've already pre-configured this client with access to that. So, I'm going to say, okay, look at that. Now watch this. Bam! I now have a command prompt running as the system user. Meaning system has access to do a lot of bad things without needing any kind of authorization to do them. Now I created a file called hack menu and dumped it into the Windows folder as part of that other process. From this menu that I've written, I can delete users, add users, hide a user from the login screen, change a user's password, delete a user's files, delete every user's files, encrypt the user's directory. And these are just basic, basic things. I mean, there's a lot more stuff you can do 
not needed to get into it. If I wanted to cause trouble for somebody, I could do something as innocuous as change your password. So let's say, for instance, I wanted to change your password just to be a jerk to you. I've changed the password for this account. You come home from shooting pool, you punch in your password, you aren't getting in your system. If I wanted to go a step further, let's say I really want to be vicious about this whole thing. Not only have I changed your password, I'm going to hide your account now. That account, I may have to actually do that by case sensitive, so let's just put one in by case sensitive, just to be on the safe side. Now, I've just hidden your account. I'm even going to go a step further. I want to take over your system. So I'm going to add an account. And yes, I want this user to be an administrator. And yeah, I want to hide them from login. I don't want you to ever see that that account is in this system. Now I'm going to create the user test user. And I'm going to give it the password, password, just to make this easy on myself. I've created a user right here. I've added them to the administrators group. And I've hidden them from the login screen. Now I'm back at my happy little menu here. Now, while you're beating your head against trying to get in, I am actually going to log into your system. This will take a minute or two to get in. The preparing your desktop portion of this takes forever for some reason. So in the meantime, you're sitting here beating your head against your password. I can't remember my password. Hit reset password. Oh, you didn't keep a password disk, did you? Okay, well, you aren't resetting your password then. So in the meantime, you're kind of, where did I do with my password? What happened here? You know, so forth, just beating your head against it. And you just can't seem to figure it out. In the meantime, I'm sitting here at my computer, which is probably in my bedroom wherever I am, staring at the screen going, hmm, I wonder what I can do now. Now, for the sake of argument, while I'm waiting for that for demonstrational purposes, I'm going to call up that little menu I wrote from here. Okay, so just to give you an idea of the severity of this, if I said delete user, I can say, all right, there's my test user account, there's guest, there's your account. I can delete your account. I've already shown you I can add an account. I've already shown you I can change a password on an account. I can go in here and say, I want to delete your files, delete every user file. The, the reason the encryption is a bad thing is if I choose to encrypt your files, and change the cipher key that's associated with them, which is what I've programmed this batch file to do, and then I delete them, you have no hope of ever recovering those files. If I just said delete users' files and deleted your user files, you can use software and actually recover those files. If I encrypt them, you will never get them back, especially if I encrypt them and then delete your user account. Oh, there we go. From the looks of things, I think we're back in business, so... Let's quit out of here. So now I have access to your system. And just to show you, it's an administrator account. If I was not an administrator, I could not do that. Now, let's say by some miracle you figure out what I changed your password to. Oh, look, another user is currently logged in. Who's logged into my computer? Yeah, I want to disconnect them. Unfortunately for you, it doesn't let me do that. So I'm going to say, no, you can't have control of your computer back. It's going to come back over here and tell you, you know, user denied your access. What do you mean user denied my access? How can they deny my access? And that's going to boot you back to the login screen. Now, if I wanted to be real jerky about this, let's say... I got that, and I decided I'm going to hide your user account now because I don't want you getting into your system. I think I did that already. Switch user. Yes, give me back my computer. And I say, no, you can't have it back. Then I do request. It's going to go back to the login screen. Okay, your account's going to keep showing up probably until I get a reboot. It probably takes a reboot to take that effect. So... Let's just say for ha-has, you said, well, maybe if I reboot my computer, that'll fix it. So you go over here and you hit restart. And you say, yeah, I'm going to kick the person out. I want to restart. Well, it does kick me out when you restart. That's 
pretty self-explanatory, and anybody who's ever used Windows before would, would know that's going to happen. So, now you're sitting in front of your computer, waiting. And your computer's booting. Unfortunately, with this thing recording at this point in time, it's slowed down my virtual machine pretty, pretty significantly. So, now we're waiting for the user screen to come up. Okay, so the hide thing is hit or miss. It was working previously. Irrelevant. <clears throat> Now, here's the trick to this. If they get in before you do, you have no control anymore, you would think. So let's say I finally get into my system. Oh, good. There's no user logged in now. In the meantime, the malicious roommate has decided, oh, I can hear his system. He's rebooted it. Well, I don't want him on there. So, what does the shutdown command offer me? That's not what I wanted. All right, apparently I can't get it from here. You would think you could. All right, so from the system account, you can't access a shutdown command. There's a bummer for you. At least I don't think we can. Oh, look at that. You can. Now the question is, is it actually going to shut down or not? Doesn't appear it does. So let's try giving it a little help. Oh, a system shutdown's already scheduled. There it goes. I've just logged you off your own computer. A little forcibly granted, but I've logged you off the computer. Now, someone who really wants to get control again could start pinging the IP address and wait for it to respond. And once it responds, start trying to hammer into it with a remote desktop connection. So you're waiting for your computer to come back up. I'm going to try and hack into it while you're doing that. And just for the sake of argument, out of my own curiosity, I'd like to know, I know there is a shutdown that involves a log off. So, let's do a little research and find out what that is required. So I'm going to log in. I'm going to open a command prompt. Ah, it is happening. It's just going too fast. I can't see it. There we go. Shutdown slash L. All right. Now the question is, who does it log off? Current user or whoever's running? Let's find out. Logs off the current user. That's not much good to us. What else can we do here? Just having fun with just the shutdown portion of this command. Well, we've already proven we can restart. I know I can turn it off. All right, so shutdown's really not going to do a lot for us in terms of logging the user off. But notwithstanding that, if I try and log in here as my hidden user account, which I don't remember what I called it. I thought it was test user. And password. 
Now it's going to give them the same prompt that I had. Are you sure you want to disconnect? Of course, they are not going to let me connect. Now, since I can't do much about that, I'm going to bring up my hack menu. And I am just going to delete their account. Now, I'm going to quit this. Now that I've got my happy little thing here, shut down minus F, minus R, minus T, zero. Insta shutdown, no warning. Now, bear in mind, I've just deleted your account, so you aren't getting back in when the system comes back up. So we'll put that from your perspective. You're sitting there in front of your computer. Your happy little Windows things come up. Right now, you're probably going out of your mind saying, why is my computer acting up? Who's in my system? What are they doing? And, you know, all kinds of other bad things are probably running through your head right now, as they rightly should. Oh, no! There's no user accounts that are available in the system. So you're like, oh, I must just have to type my information again. You put in your username, oh, it's not recognized. So now while you're beating your face against that, trying to figure out how to get back in, I'm gonna be trying to take over your system again. This will time out, I can guarantee you, because Windows IPs are probably not online yet. And I bet you if I hit retry, it works right away. See that? And then I, on the other hand, can sit here and do this. And get back to your system. Now, you have no access to your system. I have full access to your system. So, now I can start corrupting your files, copying your data. I can do pretty much whatever I want from this point on. So... Ideally, you know, this is this is meant partially to kind of give people a heads up of what this exploit can allow somebody to do, why it's bad to run as administrator, and also hopefully Microsoft will take some heat of this and say, oh, big issue, we should probably fix this. I am going to roll my machine back to a previous state so that I don't have that problem anymore. So uh, don't email me asking how to do this. Because I'm not going to tell you, I'm not going to give you the files, I'm not, I'm not going to do any of that. So don't waste your time, don't waste my time. 